Joe, I know you're going to sneak in with that sexy voice, man. Where you at? What up, cutie? There he is. What's up, brother? <laughs> On my laptop today, so my little spare crappy laptop. Oh, yeah. Let me make this clear, guys, is because like, man, I'll get a DM, dude, once a day where people are like, Tosh, I know you trade off TD. I'm like, bro, I don't trade off TD. This is my laptop for webinars. It, like literally, dude, the only reason why I own this laptop is for webinars. <laughs> like, and I'm only using this for charting. So guys, I am using Cobra with DOS as most of us do. But me and Joe are on laptops today, just so you know. <laughs> I got I to make that clear, yeah. man. Yeah, I, mean, I use... Dude, I use Thinkorswim for charting, and then and then uh, I had God bless Netflix. Fuck me. Oh God, here um, we go. He's get, he's gonna give dude. us all fucking FOMO, dude. No, no, bro. I ain't even. I'm not even. I'm not even like. I'm not even in it anymore, bro. I bought. See, look, look at the opening range break over four sixty right there at that morning. You see oh, that, dude? Dip? Joe, you screw that, that. Dip right Open there. No, look at that dip. You see that little dip right above? Go. You're up. talking about right here? Nope. Up. Look at 460. You're talking about this dip. Look at the 460 level. One sec. 460. Uh, where are we at? 460. I see. Right there. There we and go. Now you see that little dip right there? I bought that dip, sold the push to 464, and then I was done. And <laughs> here we fucking are. Dude, here's the best part. Bro, Listen to this. Bro, dude, you want, bro, bro. This makes me, bro. This I makes bought me... the options at 290, sold no. them at 390. Guess what they're trading now? 1920 bro i i i'm gonna do you one better it is man. up like 400 percent bro i'm gonna do you one better i'm gonna do you one better one of my best friends has this average long oh god a <laughs> hundred wow. shares what one of my best friends do that he's not even a fucking trader dude he has a hundred shares long at a hundred oh my gosh i'm like bro i will take that over any short position this entire dude month. i will take that over anything like any day <laughs> of the week if i had the patience to just buy stuff and then just hold it i wouldn't be here jacking around every day of my life bro you got like, a warren I, buffett that shit <laughs> bro i'm serious they made a movie out of joe kelly about stocks dude here it is <laughs> Oh shit. Here's Harry Haas and here's Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is too good, dude. Oh, oh my god, god. your Faye. coworker has a she thousand says, shares of Tesla at 30 foot. Get out of here. Okay. Dude, Tay owns Tesla from 382. You do not. Tay, Tay does. Tay, Tay does. Come, we can't be friends anymore. I'm just too jealous. <laughs> Tay, Tay with a T has shares of tesla from like 382 i think she owns amazon from like 400 bro alex like, does too alex is in like amazon for the rest of his life we had a phone call re so a yeah. funny story man um alex i don't know his exact average that's his personal business but like sure. alex has a really really good average on um on amazon and dude during this <laughs> he bought major, berkshire hathaway berkshire <laughs> 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 so dude check this out look there it is i knew 657 joe, and joe look at this look at that hey we it. can't be friends anymore i'm telling you right now oh, dude, listen to this gosh. listen to this so during this huge market downturn during the pandemic bro um when when tesla when amazon started going back to like dude 1600s and near the 1500 level i was eyeing the 1500 level for literally like a lifetime swing dude like the next 10 years bro i dude we were all eyeing the dip and then the rest of us went oh it's gonna dip more and then nope dude it, it was so funny though because i I, re I remember the night it happened dude i like like the major tank day i called alex and i said alex what are you doing with what are you doing with amazon and he's like dude apparently i'm gonna be even on my fucking position here before i know it. and that was a 2800 <laughs> dude amazon almost three thousand. like i bro that makes you that makes me think of uh it makes me think of avengers i love you three thousand. oh yeah what was it? And he goes in there and tells and tells Pepper he's like, I think you were in the low seven hundred range or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the averages. That is an average if you get in right now versus Alex's average. 
Oh shit, man. It's just, you know, what's so funny, man, about it is like, if we were all smart, dude, we'd probably just park our money in like Berkshire Hathaway or something like this. Dude, for real. Like it, it, it's just human nature. You know, it's, we thought the world was ending and you know, we, we all said it. We're like, the market is going to bounce. The market is going to bounce. And, and dude, I bought like two things. Like I own some Exxon and then I bought Slack and I already sold Slack. And, and, uh, and I, I will that, admit, man, I, bought. I, I will, dude, I will absolutely admit, dude, I, I made a killing on the market dip. I really, dude, I longed everything that I like of, of companies that I think are future proof, but right. I, my dumb ass sold them all. So I, I'm like, can the market just tank again so I can get Whoa, my that's averages what I'm saying. Back? We all sold because we think the market's going to tank again. But the fact that we all think it's going to tank again, probably not going to happen. And now it's not going to, exactly. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> dude, <laughs> you're going to have to go eat a bat or something, dude. Dude, for real. Oh, so, my God. Uh, a guy <laughs> bow bought some beanie babies <laughs> dude those are probably still appreciated <laughs> like i bet they appreciate aren't every the, single aren't year those one of the aren't those one of the only things that are like apocalyptic proof beanie babies and twinkies <laughs> <laughs> dude so so it's so funny it's man probably a all, bad investment <laughs> bro all these real estate moguls and all that are like buy assets buy assets buy houses and stuff i'm like Bitch, can I go back in time and buy Beanie Babies? I've appreciated way more. <laughs> Bro, I, I saw a YouTube video the other day that said a first edition Charizard Pokemon card from when I was 10 is worth $55,000 in perfect condition. I said, dude, what the hell are we doing wow. trading? <laughs> wow. Dude, I collected so many Pokemon cards. What like, it ain't hell? even funny. Holy shit, dude. Apparently, apparently we can't hold on to any positions, Joe. Not even our 10-year-old Pokemon card. Dude, no. I <laughs> I used to buy put you know it's kind of I'm just gonna sound I'm gonna sound like a total asshole for saying this, but there was this there was this um there was this chick in high school that I was trying to trying to hook up with and her little brother loved Pokemon and so I gave him like my immense collection of Pokemon cards. <laughs> to get closer to her. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you something, dude. I'm going to tell you something. I respect you as a man, but from an investor standpoint, damn, you dumb. <laughs> Bro, for real. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I will die for women, but <laughs> I won't give up my investments. <laughs> I gave up my Pokemon cards for that cookie. That, that kid is hawking your Charizard on eBay right now for 100 Gs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that little brother got the last laugh while you were with his sister <laughs> <laughs> holy shit man oh and she was psycho too i don't even know why i did it <laughs> i was like dude i had garbage garbage pale kids the whole thing i gave it to a girl in high school and moved away for a week oh my god <laughs> <laughs> god, dude you, well, here's the here's the thing guys the the reason why we put on these webinars is twofold we want you guys to see what a day in the life of MIC looks like, a day in the life of traders, and we want to have fun, man. The, the whole point of this industry is it is so fucking lonely alone, man. I traded for the first two years of my life, dude, entirely alone in like a shitty apartment in LA, like eight, seven, eight years ago, whatever it was, dude. And I hated every bit of it. And then I realized my dad was a trader for 20 years, which he kind of always kept under wraps. And then we floundered for like a year after that. And then I found Bow and Alex. And then I started doing really good. But I didn't do good until I reached out and networked with other traders. That's the key, man. So again, it's like you can even make money alone, but how lonely are you going to be? Dude, these are fun, man. Like we like to get on here and have fun, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I have to get back to the topic of the webinar. I'm like, does anybody have questions? <laughs> nice, Bow. Nice. What do you trade? Blink? Dude, and we also want to show you guys, this is why we do these, is we want to show you guys um, real live trading that was trading live right now dude this is not this is not recorded dude like look he it, because it didn't reach outer lines in the morning and it broke down you use previous resistance points this is not rocket science man so check this out guys actually where's my circle tool this is what we do every day we teach this this is a top this is a top so when this comes up 
this is the short range. So look what Bao did, dude. He scaled the line. And most importantly, the five line is what we're looking at. But if we're not waiting until absolutely five, and you want to scale into five because that's where resistance, this is where the panic stuff moves happen. Look, dude, this is, this is why we do it. So yeah, Bao could have had a little bit more patience for probably 490 or five, but dude, look, this is what scaling is. Guys, this is the key to scaling. If you go in full size, like say your full size is 5,000 shares and you go in full size at 570, that's not what you want, man. You want to be able to quote unquote weather a move up to five while Joe's booty call calls him. Actually, that was probably Faye right there. She's hollering right now live. She's like, holla. Yeah, sorry. I, I, that, was, that was Faye, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't tell the wife. Faye is shooting her shot again. Oh. Who's trading against Bao? All right, we'll go back to WKHS. <laughs> but see, this is this is this is why we do this, man. It's just fun, man. You see real traders, man, doing real things, shooting the shit, get a day in the life of MIC, man. And um, and we're here for you guys to answer any of your questions. So now that now for the guys in here on YouTube or in the webinar chat who's maybe new, do you guys actually have questions for us? Because we're here to answer and not just be a talk show, of course. Who's got some questions, man? We got nothing on uh, YouTube. Uh, How to pick up side sleeping. chicks. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you got to walk the walk and talk the talk, bro. <laughs> Guys, let me, let, I already did this, but let me talk about it again for the guys that maybe came in late. Actually, Joe, I want you to discuss it because you are the creator of it. So let me actually just keep the decal up. Joe, what is the accelerator? Why do people want it? Why did you create it? What is it, brother? Absolutely. So the accelerator course is, <coughs> oh, yep, there's a YouTube question. All right, anyway, so Accelerator course is seven and a half hours of all of the condensed content of MIC, nothing regurgitated, all brand new content that will take a trader from absolutely knowing nothing about the market. They don't even need to know what a stock is and will educate you fully on everything you need to know in order to become a consistently profitable and self-sufficient day trader. That's it. You focus on the process that we teach in that course and it's proven that if you follow the rules we put in there and maintain self-discipline, you will become consistently profitable. Well, and the best way that, you know, Bao described it, man, like the other day is I love the way you describe it, guys. It is truly a cheat sheet of all our material, man. All of our material. It is, it is the clip notes, dude. If you go into the SATs and you have to study for four months and 10,000 textbooks, bro, this is like one book that you, that you read or obviously a course that you watch that is like, this is how you trade. And it's very linear focus. It gets to the point. It talks about everything we talked about. I mean, you guys have to understand. Let me, let me make this very clear. Two things. First off, Everybody in this industry is, a, is an actor and a salesman, not an actual teacher. So what they're doing, dude, is they're parlaying all these bullshit 10-year-old outdated DVDs, dude. This is not a DVD. This is a full-blown course. And what those DVDs are, the, prop, the reason why you see furus or main two furus that I'm sure you're very well aware of, the reason why when you open up their quote unquote shop on their website and they have, um, you know, um, DVD number one, two, three, four, and five and six is guys, that's just, that's just marketing tactics. That's just bullshit, dude. We've got one course that covers everything we've ever talked about. Like that's why it's not a DVD, dude. A DVD is like, here's how to buy breakouts. This is how to trade lines. This is how to trade every setup we talked about. This is psychology. This is how to deal with being humble. This is, this is literally everything. Um, it's a full entire course. So, you know, if you go to dinner and you get the a la carte on a Furu website, that's what you're going to get, man. You're going to get the beans. Dude, this is the freaking steak. This is the, this is the guacamole. This is the chips. This is the, this is the Modelo, like depending on where you go. <laughs> this is the Hennessy at the club after. I, I know Bao, I, Bao's ears just pricked up. The key, Hennessey man. Hennessy, say what? And Bao's like, Hennessy? <laughs> Dude, 
I'm telling you right now, I, I don't know. I can't get behind the Henny, man. Bow, I appreciate you, bro. I like, I, I found out, I think, I think it's an Asian drink, man. Like, like none of my friends except my Asian friends drink Henny. <laughs> like, Dude, I, I hate Hennessy. Dude, I can't do it, man. I can't do I it, bro. It. It's like different taste buds or something. <laughs> I think it just tastes like diluted urine. Maybe that's our genetic Caucasian taste buds, bro. I have no idea, but I can't do the Henny I, either, bro. I can't do it. I can't do the fucking Henny, man. I can't do it. But I can do the Reposado all day with Bao. In fact, I turned Bao on to the best tequila in the world, man. You know what? That's actually good shit too, man. So guys, really quick, just going back. Look, other services are charging you eight thousand dollars to not only meet them which we do for free that's like a one year that's like Whoa, a one year immediate DVD. what just happened there what's that bro workhorse look at that candle let's take a look that's some volume just out of nowhere oh shit definitely held ld18 Yeah, man, I'm just not touching this. This is a little too strong for my liking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revisit this tomorrow. I didn't <laughs> place any trades on that today. Can we explain the chart on BLNK? I guess that would be Bows. Sure. Uh, well, I kind of I kind of did, but here, I mean, here, this is what's called a low hanger, bro. So, you know, <clears throat> going into the day, you have to understand, the day before it got slaughtered on the long side. So what does that mean? it means longs are stuck on their position. So any relief pops and specifically the ones of panic. So like these, these wicks are panic, right? Like wicks are literally constant buying and then a stuff move or, you know, to the, to the bottom, like that's the selling and then it gets bought back up. Like these are panic. So if you have these tops, that's what Bao did. All he did was not only follow, you know, the broken trend, he shorted back at resistance points on using what I would assume is the 490 or the five line, but I wrote the five line because it's kind of a perfect in-between of both. But these are the previous tops. So what we teach at MIC every single day, man, is you need to go where previous resistance is. So not only if you pull back, is this kind of like a quote unquote day two, um, because if you account this as like the day one tank, this is the day where relief pops are ideally and generally going to get sold off on. And because it already put pr two previous tops, a long you know, jump off lows is into resistance is usually a good scale. And it lined up with reversal time that Val was doing um, within the hour of when stocks actually do go back down. So that was the thinking behind that. <clears throat> Val just shorted at 18.47 on workhorse wait a second austin are you serious dude i thought you guys had did but bow literally got you hennessy shots are you kidding dude that's hysterical he got hennessy dude he had me like i was already <laughs> i was already uh <clears throat> um like four or five six drinks in and it was just like the mixed drinks that we were doing at the table with chad and it was like, whatever it was, some kind of vodka or something like that. And vodka cranberry. I don't, it was, it was something. Oh God, man. Seriously. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and then the whole night I was like, man, I got to stay, I got to stay on this side of the club because if I go near bow, we're going to end up doing shots. And I was like, <laughs> I, I just can't, I can't do shots with bow. He, he just, I'll get ran into the dirt. Like, I just can't do it. I tried to do it in Dallas, and it was rough. Bro, Good. this is, I'm telling you right now, Bow's, this is initiation with Bow, bro. He's the king. He's the legend, man, not only of trading but drinking, dude. He will meet you the first time. You'll, he'll be freaking 14 shots deep. You'll be on your first and by the second one, dude. He's still, like, trading and looking at things, and you're dead, dude. So this is Aloha oh, Trader yeah. Austin, basically, a.k.a. Tarzan, uh, meeting Bow for the first time in Hawaii. Literally, dude, by random coincidence. So, like, that's why we believe in the fucking everything happens for a reason dude i'm telling you right now and now he's one of our head moderators dude so i don't i don't know what kind of cosmic stuff that is but how sick is that Bow, i like the submariner dude looking good but <clears throat> dude how funny is that and we called the hennessy dude <laughs> so That's, sick dude so sick can't do hennessy man I, I can't do drinking anymore, man. After meeting Bow, dude, i think i i went sober bro i can't do it he he scared me straight Yeah, Faye, <laughs> Faye's like, Faye, advice, 
when the next physical in-person meetup is, is meet Bao very early in the evening <laughs> and then <clears throat> stick around Austin. Stick around me and Austin because I don't drink. Me, me Austin, and Tosh are going <laughs> to be like, Bao's over there. We're going to keep him over there. And because, I'm telling you, Bao is the life of the party, but you will death line. You, 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 you will have the most fun with Bao, but you're yes. going to stay safe and wake up coherent the next day with me, Joe, and Austin. <laughs> if you try to go toe-to-toe with Bao. You're dead, bar, dude. You're dead. You're done. You're done. It's You're the same done. thing in the stock market. If you try to go toe-to-toe with Bao in the stock market, nine, ten, nine out of ten people lose. Same thing with same thing at the club. If you try to go toe to toe with him, shots for shots, nine out of ten are dead. Absolutely. You'll be drunk as a skunk in ten Dude, minutes. You're gonna be in the hospital in ten minutes. Like <laughs> you're gonna, it's done. It's I'm done. telling you right now, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, who's, like, who's ever seen the movie Beer Fest? By 10 p.m. It's that's for real, dude. The movie yeah. Beer Fest. If you want to know what drinking with Bao is like, or you need to at least warm up to meeting Bao and drinking him, you got to watch the movie Beer Fest and how they prepare for the for the for like the games yes. at the end of the movie. I Z E A June twenty fifth. If you'll pull that up, so like a week ago, if you uh, would trade the bounce at ten a.m. Hold on one sec, one sec. I Z E A, huh? Is it within a 15-day chart? Yeah, June 25th. <clears throat> so that's like a week. Oh, God. What happened? I don't know. So <clears throat> the question remember. is, if you would trade the bounce oh, that's at not the 10 That's not the day, is it? Uh, I don't know. I'm not looking. June 25th? Here. June 25th. Were we even playing it that day? What the? This? Uh, oh, oh, no, oh. Here we go. That day right there. Oh, God. Help us. No. Okay, so question is this. Here's the question. And Bao just covered half of Workhorse anyway. So, nice, Bao. Nice. Um, and for those of you on YouTube, please do not follow anything we are discussing here. If you would trade the bounce at 10 a.m., where would you stop out? Would the trade make sense? if you stopped out over 140. Uh, so it's from the short side. He's asking, would we short it uh, on the bounce in at 10 a.m.? Draw your lines, brother. Where are the tops? Where are the major points of interest, right? Like these are the three that just gauge my eye really quickly. So I don't hit things like this because this is not a major, major one candle death tank. This is more of like a, just a little bit of a breakdown. So I don't typically short things like this, but if you do, this is the area of interest that you want to short into and use your stop in my opinion, because this is kind of an inner line though. So again, you know, um, I like outer lines. So I'm waiting for these in the morning, you know, like literally levels up to like maybe these three lines, that's where I would have been scaling. But if you do hit this bounce, then in my opinion, I mean, over this, over, over this level right here at 140. Yeah, I really do. Because this is the, this is like a consolidation point and kind of like previous top and the point of where it failed. And it's the open line, dude. Like this is where people are underwater yep. if they're just intraday traders. Yep. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Um, <clears throat> if you had a average under 140 and you were stopping out over mm -hmm. 140, yeah, because the break of 140 is going to bring 150, 160. Like, For sure. Out. And so there's no reason to not cut the lower average. It's not to say don't stop shorting it, but, you know, I would cut the lower average and, you know, still leave my lines 150, 160, and then – and then scale from there. But well, and guys, you also there. have to think about it like this. So it's also a, a perception type thing, right? So think about it like this. This is like a little bit of like almost like a coaching session, right? So say you short at 130, 133, 135. Dude, your stop out by four, 140, maybe 142 is a very long way. And now you feel depleted and it's a big loss when all you were doing was chasing and hitting inner lines, right? Yep. Say you waited for 139. If you're stopping out at 142, bro, that is, oh my God. <laughs> Jesus, Tay. Um, dude, she is the Messiah. Tay, what the, okay, what the hell? 
That's insane. So guys, here, here's the thing. Listen to this. So if you are shorting and waiting, I'm going to show you a, 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 an example that I literally took today on this. If you're shorting at 139 and not from 132 here's, and scaling, you're stopping. Cra crazy. I'm sorry to interrupt you here. I, just to get back to this Tay workhorse <laughs> position, just real quick. Sorry. Go ahead, dude. Dude. Okay. All right. Don't lose your train of thought on IZEA. <laughs> but, okay, look, here's what's funny about this. This is what it puts everything into perspective. People are more impressed that Tay owns Workhorse at 310 than they are that she owns fucking Tesla at 380. That's or hysterical. Amazon at 670. Like people are more impressed that she bought the pile of shit company Workhorse at 310 than they are like, holy crap, Amazon and Tesla at 600 and 300? What? Yo, and, I, 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 like, I'm oh, honestly, bro. Cool. But the fact that she owns it at 310, it's just mind blowing. It's Bro, mind boggling. I, I gotta be honest, out of all her investments, man, I'm honestly just more impressed that she owns California when it belonged to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude, now that's a feat. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing guys again outer bro, lines are you waiting it. for the perfect entry if you short at 139 bro and 142 is your stop what's your stop three cents and then if it does stuff you can get back in but if you started here and you've been adding and adding and adding and then this is your point of stop up here then you're depleted then you don't want to get in if it confirms again because you're down on yourself and you feel like you traded like shit never be scared to take a small loss to re-attack Yes, yes, exactly. Aloha, small loss life, dude. He did that perfectly today. So, so let me show you guys an example of what I did today. Seriously, let me show you an example. Um, I'm going to show you an example of what I do every fucking day. <laughs> here's an example. Look at this. Look at this. Um, here's a perfect one. Here's a perfect one. TTOO. Look at this from the morning. This is what I did. Totally piked it like a little bitch, but here's what I did. I was going to stop out at about 143 on this, right? So I could have, let's take a look. And again, I give myself more room, but then, then maybe newer traders, obviously, but it's okay. So this is, a, this is a tight stop for me, considering the scheme of things. If I would have just started at 210, by the time I'm stopping out at 242, dude, that's a big fucking move. I waited for 24, which, and then I doubled down up here, right? And I was probably going to triple down up here because that's where I was willing to scale up to. But the more you wait for outer lines, the less you're going to actually have to stop out if you're wrong. And then right here, because I started in somewhat pretty good, actually, if this would have stopped me out and then stuffed, I could have gotten right back in, man. Then trying to trade this pre-market at 205 and then adding and adding and adding and stopping at 204. And then I'm scared to get in because I'm already down so much. So Again, it always boils down to patience, bro. Patience, patience, patience. <laughs> Tay still has the Spanish flu. <laughs> Does it work for on COVID? Oh, my God. Holy shit, that's funny. And my DMs. Oh, my God. Well, you got a lot? <coughs> Did everybody just up. want to become Joe's tab partner? <laughs> Uh, in one of your video. Okay. Hang on. Oh, right here. Let me. All right. We don't have anything on YouTube. Just check and make sure I didn't miss anything. Check out workhorse too, before we answer this. Let's take a look. Workhorse is having that push on that 1850 line again, but you know, it's 40 minutes to the close. So there's no reason to be hitting any of Dude, this. We do not open up a short in the last hour of the day, guys. Yep, I know never. this is Pacific Standard Time, so don't don't worry about mine. But like literally, just the, the three p.m. Eastern rule. Um, do not open up a short the last hour of the day. It's never worth it. You may win a couple times. Um, then that one time that really eats your eats your neck, dude, like a vampire. You're done, dude. You're fucking done. I knew. It and then wanted. it gaps up and runs after you know it. It gaps up and runs after hours pre market. Gaps up the next day. You're dead, dude. You're dead. All right, so in one of the beginner trader series, you show your method for entering a trade and giving it a dollar to move and five minutes to tell you where your new risk will be. Yes. What happens if you enter at two in the two minute, in the five minutes it goes to 280, still within the risk? Would you still use 280 as your risk and add the rest of your position near that 280 top? Or would you cut it and re enter at 280 ish? 
guess what I'm asking, is there a limit from where the stock spikes from your entry that you would cut it even if it stays and then it probably applies to lower price stocks? Um, I'm not <laughs> the biggest fan of using the dollar risk method uh, in, in small caps for myself. Um, I personally believe that if you're going to do it in small caps, uh, on the short side, you're basically just trying to pick a top. There's usually a risk that is much clearer in that time frame than than uh, than having to wait that long. Uh, it works really well for large caps, but for small caps, you know, it's it. The whole reason why I think about the dollar risk thing is. The mentality is if I want to short something or long something and I want to take a starter, my rule for myself is that if I choose to take a starter, I have to be willing to start size that it could go a dollar against me and I wouldn't care. Okay, that's kind of my rule. If I want to take a starter, I, that's why that prevents me from going like, okay, I like this $2 level. I would like to short here, but maybe it goes to three, maybe it goes to four. I don't know where it could go, but I want to take a starter. So in my mind, I go, well, how much am I okay losing? And that dictates my starter size. So if, for instance, I'm okay losing $500 on the trade, my starter size is going to be 500 shares. And that's how I choose my size. Because a lot of people what they struggle with is not choosing the right levels, not choosing the right thesis, it's size. A lot of people struggle with the size aspect of when to use size, when to not use size, when to scale slowly, when to attack and so on and so forth. And so for me, that dollar risk thing is just so I don't get ahead of myself too fast because I'm guilty, 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 guilty of starting a position and then starting to add like right away because I feel like I don't have enough shares or whatever it may be. And so it's just a rule for myself to help me keep myself in check. And the five minute rule is just because, dude, I, I use that rule in almost everything. So I, it's, it just helps me determine the fudge factor uh, to let the stock show itself where the fudge factor the fudge factor that is not a sexual term by the way not a sexual term correct <laughs> <laughs> myos huge crack i guess no way am i gonna have to uh -oh. race to my computer son of a bitch i'll be back <laughs> no i'm kidding dude i can't i can't oh. i gotta obey my rules shit look at the volume on that candle though bro that's nice 1.7 god that's what i love Oh man, tomorrow, Bow, you know we'd be eyeing that 350 line. <laughs> Bro, it, see, we're, te we're teaching too much on this free webinar. <laughs> I'm gonna nice. be all over the, Dude, if this keeps breaking candle. down tomorrow, 350 line, I'm all over it. Look at that. It's almost 2.5 million now in that candle. See, we, we want this to stay up, guys, because here's the thing because we're not placing shorts in this time, dude, this is not the time frame. Now we just want this to go as high as possible so there's more meat to come down, like Val just said. Like, let this trap shorts, dude. Let this freaking trap back up, go to freaking seven by tomorrow, gap up, and then we can short it from there on like maybe like a, um, a really big break or maybe a day three first red day. But right now we're like, dude, please save this shit. All we need is Tay to go in and just buy a million shares. For real. Come on, Tay. Save us. <clears throat> how, uh, can how can we spot market? traps long or short? And how can we get an idea pre-market on who is stuck? So what was that stock today? R Y R C W or oops, Y R C W. Uh, so there's really one way um, Eugen to see who's stuck pre-market. So one of the number one things that you have to pay attention to guys, um, every single morning, and this is why I wait for the open so I can get a really, really clear indication of who is in trouble. If I'm a short bias trader, I really want to know who is short, uh, who is stuck long. So if I draw, um, where this stock opened at, right? 
Like, um, dude, this is like the, what, the 60% mark from the, like, this is very far from highs. This is highs, bro. If a stock is opening very far from its highs, you have to understand like longs are stuck, dude. So I'm looking into outer lines for a short on this. They are stuck. So that's a really good way to gauge pre-market. If you're looking at something like, um, Joe, what was that really strong one today that we were like, dude, could be a total hot chick. And then it actually turned out not to be. Actually, I think, I think it was um, like BYFC is a good example. Like BYFC yesterday, right? So if something is opening, you know, that's not too overextended. And again, just wait for your confirmation. But like right here, like BYFC yesterday, dude, if this is super overextended in front side, this is not necessarily short until it proves itself. And then it did obviously in the open when you get candles like this. But the point is, dude, is like short, uh, shorts are, are the ones screwed in this pre-market, not longs. Like just play trend, man. It's really just, it's like, don't confuse the trend, right? And then to the, the way to gauge traps is like, Dude, SSR is a way, like sometimes they trigger that and then rip the shit, um, you know, panic selling, panic buying, like we said, if you want to pay attention to Wix, I think that's a really big indicator. Joe, do you have any other advice? I was just trying to look for that. What was it? Was it A-T-H-E? Was it? Uh, I, I can't remember. Was yeah, it, wasn't there? Oh, like this, that was a trap. Dude, that was, dude, this one. One of the number one ways to gauge for me, dude, on like traps is it usually starts with a really big like FU candle and then is not fun afterwards, man. Even if it kind of like gives you a moment of reprieve, right? So like on something like this, like ATG, dude, I never short stocks that do a rip slam candle up through VWAP because it's usually followed by a major reversal or quote unquote trap. <laughs> Another thing, I look at is how close VWAP is trading to the candles. Yep. So what that tells you is like the entire time of ATHE during pre-market and this go, this is for big caps too, is how close is VWAP to the price the entire time? Like is price constantly bouncing back into, no, during pre-market, look at zoom oh, out. Oh, pre-market, pre-market, yeah. Like zoom out on pre-market. And look the entire time, once it fails VWAP, it pushes back into VWAP. You know, this is like 2.45 Martin Tosh's time there. Once it loses again, it pushes back and touches, 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 touches. Like it just continues to push right back to that level. And so it gravitates right to VWAP. But the, uh, what was that example that we were looking at earlier? That was like, oh, what, um, I can't remember. Like, we got so many charts going on. Was it, um, any of those? No, the, not those. Um, what was the chart? Yeah. We no, uh, F, uh, YRCW. Like, dude, yeah. it's opening way look, under VWAP and, and way yeah, from its high. Like, look at VWAP. VWAP is not touching any of those candles. It's not close to it at all. There's room for the stock to breathe and for shorts to still remain in control. And for longs to not have the ability to trap shorts. Because they're, what this tells you is that it's, it moves as an average, correct? VWAP moves as an average yep. price. And so if most of the size in an order is towards the bottom end of a candle, that's going to decrease the average faster, correct? I mean, just the same in any calculation. If you have one to 100 and there's no size from one to 90, and then all of a sudden, you know, like one share between one to 90, and then all of a sudden from 90 to 100, there's massive amounts of size. The average is going to increase drastically, like super fast. And so what that tells you is when VWAP hugs the price like that, look, all in pre-market, VWAP hugged the price of VWAP or hugged the price to the, to the upside, okay? So that and tells you the moment it loses VWAP and it cracks a key support level, longs are underwater and shorts are now in control. Right there, Josh points it out perfectly. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, I know what you're talking about, brother. <laughs> I love this shit. It's when you see that extension away from VWAP and VWAP doesn't follow the price, it tells you, whoa, workhorse candle. Holy crap. Shit, I can't keep up with That's everything. Val's trading. Oh, my. Look at that. Dude, Look I'm telling that. you, I don't like this, man. I'm, I'm waiting till tomorrow. What did Val just hit? VXRT? Nice. 
trading that channel. Oh, boy. Hitting those channels, man. Hit, that's channel trading right there. I don't know what those. these lines are. Let's get rid of these. Oh, these were yesterday's. Uh, so, yeah, for me, you know, I used to. Dude, nice. Know how to reference. Oh, wow. Perfect. Wow. Cover. Perfect save, man. See, that's the, that's the 3 p.m. Dude, this is the power of 3 p.m. This is what we teach. This is what we just talked about live. Nice, nice payout bow. Man, Austin called the squeeze on Workhorse this morning at like freaking 15 minutes after the market opened. Dude, I, I, like, I, was, I was proud of this one, man. Bro, I was like, dude, like squeeze today. Bro, this one, I was even saying in pre-market, I was like, guys, I don't like this. This is no man's land on MYOS. Bao was saying it was weird. Aloha yeah. was like, dude, I don't know about this. But I was like, look, dude. Honestly, the only way to trade this when it's when it when you're looking at something like this, in my opinion, because this is so no man's land, you have outer lines or you wait for the impatient shorts to get squeezed, form a top and a breakdown, and then short, you know, the, obviously VWAP the resistance point. Price. Look at VWAP chasing that price the entire time. Dude, see, see Did guys. That, oh man, Joe, we're giving it, we're giving away too much, bro. <laughs> you guys gotta get the accelerator course, man. The whole time. And then yeah, even after that. the market opens, after the market opens, if you look at it, scroll to the right. Oh, sorry about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right after the market opens and it reclaims VWAP, it starts to hug it on the downside. So the moment it loses VWAP, shorts have lost control. There's the loss. And then boom, they trap shorts again. And then here we go. We're back to it. So shorts start chasing, chasing, chasing. But the problem is that they lost VWAP at a key time of the day for longs to take control again. If I remember correctly, this was, oh yeah, no, they lost VWAP midday. So yuck, gross. I mean that, you know, there's no, there's, there's not going to be really any panic because nobody's watching. Nobody's That's trading. exactly right. Everybody's watching workhorse. Dude, look at this. Holy shit, man. Look at this. That's crazy. And this is what we teach is, it, you would never be in workhorse right now. Never. On the side. You wouldn't be stuck in this if you just follow the strategies we teach. Let, let, right. let me explain it very simply for anybody who wants to keep it simple. If you're fighting short workhorse right now, you need a membership at MIC. Thousand percent. You need to get the accelerator course. If you are short and fighting right now, you dude, you all oh, man, eliminate ego, bro. Just sign up and learn how to actually trade, man. Yeah, first, first, first you, you need to cover. First you need to cover. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> that was a line of the day. Oh, that's the best one. <laughs> if you're still fighting it, you need a membership. Well, first First you need, you to, need cover. to cover so you can pay for your membership. <laughs> <laughs> over first wire out subscribe to mic and then start over and then hit up joe and pms and tell and ask him why you lost <laughs> <laughs> oh shit oh that's <sighs> funny man that's funny but first see, guys, like this this Maybe. is the point man every single week we are a as you can see all of us all of the mods all of the members we're all talking the same way. This is what's called process. We have strategies that work. We have, yeah, then you get drunk and you freaking butt dial and text me like I'm your ex. <laughs> Look, you can drunk text me all you want on my business line, just no dick pics. I've already been through That's that. Seriously happened? Did somebody drunk text? What's that? I said, did that seriously happen? Did somebody drunk text you? Nobody drunk text me, but I did get a dick pic once of a tranny and I was like, dude, <laughs> I was. I was like, I was like, this is actually kind of funny, but dude, no more. <laughs> I'm not gay, but that tranny has some nice breasts. Oh shit! Val's like, that was your personal phone? No, that was definitely my work line. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! What's that Drake song? Call me on my work line. Wait, so you like, you like Tim McGraw and Drake, Joe? I'm just trying to get this. What? I'm just trying to get the fundamentals right. You like Drake and Tim McGraw? Oh, bro. It's, uh, it's pretty much on my playlist at all times of the day. <laughs> no, no, no joke. That album that Drake put out, that was the one where he looks like he has that five stride gum on the side of his face. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that one? I forget the name of it. Anyway, that was my like only Drake album I ever liked. And dude, honestly, I loved every track on the album. Really? I thought it was a really well done. And I'm usually not a lover of like rap and hip hop and stuff like that. But I was like, wow, this is a damn good album. <laughs> well, started from the bottom. Now we hear. <laughs> I was like, this is a damn good album. Oh, shit. But it was like the tracks that, you know, like not that never hit the radio that I really liked. Okay, so if you're waiting for the perfect entry and it never tests that area, aren't you losing a lot in locate fees or do you add later? Uh, so for me, someone earlier asked why I prefer large caps. And this is a this is the reason perfect reason. Okay. This is an absolute per is MIOS still tanking? Oh God. We said it, bro. We said it. The death candle. Time of the day was just the thing that made it suck. And so you can't chase it. You know what I mean? I it's know the time of the day. Like you don't want to chase it, day, but like, dude, on a, on a pattern level, that is it, dude. Oh, from a pattern level, that that's Yahtzee pattern right there. That, <laughs> Yahtzo. Fucking pattern. I mean, it's and so I just this rolled five ones. I mean, this is discipline. This is this is exactly this is exactly what people fail to do. People will chase that because of you know they'll get the fear that it's that it's gonna that it's gonna tank and then and then it sucks. Oh my God, bow with the bar reference. This is like 15 minutes until the bar closes. Whatever you're chasing to go home with you, you'll regret it in the morning. <laughs> especially, if you're, especially if you're two bottles of Henny deep and your vision is impaired. I'm just going to say it, but the chicks that hang out till the bar closes are not the chicks you go home with. Oh, dude, that's They've wife material. Left. Are you kidding me? They've already left. <laughs> oh, that's wife material, bro. That's wife material. Okay. <laughs> The chicks they hang out until the close. When the lights turn on and everybody scatters like cockroaches. <laughs> dude, dude. Don't worry, I'll I'll take those side chicks. Just text just me at 2 a.m. <laughs> you just reminded me of like a horror story. That was like one oh god. Night I was at the club and I used to I used to do it all that used to go to the I used bar to go every night college. with my college guys, man. I know. Yeah. Trust me. And one night I was there until until they till they shut down usually I wasn't there until they closed and, and they turned on the lights with like, like last call. And it was like 10 minutes before they closed and they turned on the lights and I was talking to this chick and they turned on the lights. I literally stood up and walked away. Did she have an Adam's apple? Oh, bro. She had a thicker beard than I did. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe's been eating his brisket. That'll put some hair on your I'm face. You, buddy. But uh, anyway, so <laughs> back to the uh, locates question, because um, I got way off topic. <laughs> so if you're waiting for the perfect entry and it never tests that area, are you wasting a lot of money on locates? Yes, yes or, for me. Yeah, just the nature you are. However, if you have Cobra and you're able to capture the free locates, that's great. But sometimes you're not going to get that opportunity. And sometimes you just, I mean, that's locates, that's a cost of doing business. But for me, that was something I was... I was extremely God, fucking Oliver Dick. <laughs> fucking Dick. Joe got beard oil on his face. That wasn't his. Did you use Irish spring to shower? Because it really smells like you did. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, she's a manly woman if she smells like an Irish spring. Uh, anyway, so that is part That's of like the saying, remember, it's not a loss until you sell. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, it's funny. So uh, for me, the locate thing was was a part of the reason why I made the switch to large caps is because I got tired of wasted money, bro. Uh, which was if you're like me and Joe, man, where you wait for literally outer lines like or pass, bro. Uh, me, me and Joe miss all the time, man. The I, difference is all the time. I, I'm still wasting a ton of money because I trade small caps, but I've been trading a lot of big caps, dude. I love it, dude. There's there's no freaking hard to borrow fee. Although I will say during the pandemic crisis, I went to short the SPY one day and it was hard to borrow. I was like, was you know something's crazy when the SPY is a hard to borrow. Dude, that's when you just go buy puts. You that's when you just hobby. go buy puts. Yeah, you just buy the puts and you're fine. 
but that was part of the reason why I made the switch to large caps. And then, you know, I, having the ability to trade options kind of uh, it feeds my, my need for small cap type of price action. So Correct. like those big parabolic percentage moves, I can do that through options in large caps. And so it, there's just, to me, there's so many more uh, ways to trade in large caps, whereas in small caps, there's not a lot of ways to trade. There's, you know, it's either the right way or the wrong way. And in large caps, there's so many different opportunities. There's so many different types of setups. There's so many different types. And the fact that I can buy something and have faith that they're not going to offer on me in the yeah, middle. Yeah, that's, of no, that's huge, dude. That's huge. I, I, I wanted to start to build a portfolio of stocks that I hold. And I ain't doing that in small caps, bro. No, you ain't doing that in small I don't caps. Have that, I don't have that like intuition that Tay has to where she can buy these shitty little companies before they're shitty. Or <laughs> while they're shitty. Sh and she bought, she good. And she I'm bought like, Aerotine before it was Amazon. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> I don't have her intuition, man. Seriously. Oh, God. I'm getting phase comments, playback play by play what's good she wants it to squeeze back here's oh. here's let's wrap it up with this guys here's what we got going we have everything you need at mic i don't care if you've been in 10 days of the market i don't care if you've been in 10 years i don't care if your dad's been trading for 30 years we will teach you the correct way to trade because that's what we do like joe said man there's a wrong way to trade and a right way to trade if you are scammed or getting scammed by all these dumbass gurus out there that are selling you useless dvds and all this terrible content and you don't have moderators that are dude look at what time it is in the day and we're still working and having fun and laughing and talking charts and setting up for tomorrow and doing watch list and showing you things and if you go to the main trading chat like there's nothing we don't cover there's no person that you can't cannot not contact like we have everything you need watch list scans courses um reach out to me man reach out to me so the point of contact is right here um right here uh, text me at 213-458-5997 while the 1890 price is no longer valid to get the course included. Uh, because you watched this webinar today, text me and I'll work with you a little bit. But um, again, guys, we are, um, we are definitely um, not including that for this current price. But just text me. We'll see what we can do. You, might, you may have just signed up monthly. You may have just signed up um, um, you know, annually. We'll see what we can do for you. If you're a prospective client looking in, um, no dick pics, no tranny pics, but definitely text my line if you're serious about joining MIC. And, uh, and we'll get you in, man. We'll have a good time. But I will definitely make sure you are taken care of. So, and like I said, we like to reward people that once a week that stick to the end of this webinar. Cause dude, you literally just listened to a two hour rant on me and Joe, um, that I feel like we owe you guys something. <laughs> so text, text the line, like something funny text, text secret code. Um, who's got a funny secret text secret code Tay. <laughs> just text tranny to two, one, three, <laughs> text, text tranny. I'll know what you're talking about. Text my line <laughs> secret code tranny. <laughs> This is trendy. Trendy. Text text trendy or tranny. <laughs> Trannies are trendy now. Trendy. Uh, so no, we're just we're just playing around, guys, obviously, with yeah. like tranny and stuff. We just like to have fun. And that's what the community is about. If you if you haven't been sold on the fact that this is a brotherhood and a family, like literally just by this webinar alone, um, this is a day in the life of MIC. This is every single day. We're joking around, we're making sure that um we're all getting to the same goal, and that is sticking to process, sticking to discipline, and um and following what works. So, you know, again, if you have any questions, reach out. If you got anything from this webinar today, think about what a membership would be. And also, that's a tranny. Yeah, that's, seriously. I hope mine stays together. Um, <laughs> Joe, is your pickup truck? Is the tranny still good? Uh, but the thing is, guys, um, listen, you got to eliminate ego, man. If you need help, reach out for help. It is not weakness needing help or reaching out or asking for help. If you lost $200 today, I'm telling you right now, you just lost a month of MIC every single day, learning the lines, learning the patterns that could teach you how to trade for the rest of your life. If you lost two grand, you just lost an annual membership, dude, or, or an accelerator course. Like, so 
again, it's up to you. We have all the resources, but it is up to you to reach out to us, put in some work, and we'll take care of you. Last question. Would you consider PLA low-hanging fruit today? Let's take a look. I think I had that on my list. Yeah, these were my lines. These were the lines I wanted. They were very exacerbated. You know, they were, they were really far, but um, this is what I wanted. So because I probably would have even started nibbling at 440 or maybe 450, but the fact that it didn't just, it just didn't pop at all for me to get interested in, I, I, didn't, I didn't play it. But yes, I, I, did, I did consider this about a low-hanging fruit. It opened just so far from yesterday's highs or, pre or after hours highs. Yeah, this is another good example of, of why Tosh wanted the outer lines is because look how closely VWAP is hugging those candles. Like just Dude, during, the like, whole time during pre-market, like the moment, it, if it could have reclaimed VWAP, if it could have reclaimed that $4 level. Dude, this could have sent it to the, it to, the to your lines. Like this could have sent it to the heavens, man. I mean, could have been there. And, and Oh my God, bow sicko. I'll hit it. Oh my gosh. Now, psychological price target of 20 because this is resistance from the previous day. Major peak of resistance. Bow shorted uh, rather quickly. Um, guys, if you're if you're new to trading, maybe don't try this at home all the time. But oh Whoa. my god, that is so sick. Bow, you fucking wizard, dude. You wizard. This is what main trading chat, guys. This is what it looks like every single day, but with more trading. This is what main trading chat looks like live. Literally, like Dow's posting the levels. He's telling you where he's getting in. He's telling you what he's interested, what he wants to scale, where he's covering fills. Like, what don't we do? <laughs> I mean, at it, there was so many people that, oh, yeah, there's the chart that Bow posted earlier. Highlighting that 20 line. Golly. Meanwhile, look at Netflix, almost 490. Oh, dude. I bought it at 461. I suck. And Bro, sold you're 464. <laughs> God, I suck. Oh, whatever, Joe. You just lost 30 points of Deadwood. For real. For real, <laughs> this, bro. They're going to announce tomorrow I that they've like, got some love affair with I Brad Pitt four, in a new series. And this will be 700. Like, <laughs> it's like I made four points in 10 minutes. Eat that. Joe's then, like, uh, I made my eight hundred dollars today. Fuck this eighty thousand. <laughs> it's like and done. And, and and going to quit trading forever. Yeah, and I'm gonna be on the roof. Thank you. Man, wow, that's an that's an insane day, man. Tesla, fucking ten eleven twenty one. I'll tell you right I'm, now, dude. I'll tell you what I'm looking at for outer eleven twenty one sure. is a price, Tosh, not a time. What's that? <laughs> I said eleven twenty one on Tesla is a price now, <laughs> not a time. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what I'm looking at for a long-term short, man. If this gets back up to like the 120s, bro, they are not going to open up Disneyland anytime soon, man. I don't think this is going to be good. Bro, they suspended they suspended cruises until September 15th. Yeah, I, cruises, I airlines, and Disney, I'm not exactly know. wanting along right now. Yeah, I don't know why. And that's, that's just for reference, guys. I'm just going to say this. I know this is a free webinar, but just for reference, if your trade idea – on the day, if the stock's news is um, we are reopening, it's not a short that day, okay? Yeah, seriously, very clear on that. And if the news is we are suspending X, Y, Z, blah, 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 or whatever it is, we're not going to reopen until this time or we're suspending, that is not a long on dips. It is not a long. Yeah, on guys, like, like there is, look, trading is as much an art as it is a science as Bao taught me years ago. Dude, you have to put some common sense in this. If, there, if the world is shut down and we really shut down again with a massive second wave, what do you think the fucking Disney is going to do? Like, right. like live alone off their streaming service? No, dude, that's a park that's closed that doesn't make $7 million a day. Like that's serious revenue that's going into the toilet. So I, it's, you know, the, again, this is just common sense, but again, like nothing is investment advice within this, you know, it's up to your own train, but <laughs> yeah, Bal, exactly, dude. Can we do this webinar every single day? You seem to make a lot of money during these webinars. <laughs> we talked about real estate today. We talked about automotive. We talked about investing. We talked about Disney. We talked about trannies. We talked about the, the last call in a bar where they turn the lights on and Andre <laughs> the Giant is there to greet you. <laughs> 
We talked about chicks. We talked about virtual boot camps, like physical boot camps, the history of Tay owning California when Mexico had it in their hands. Dude, I, I thought that chick's teeth color was from the black light. Nope. They stayed that color when the light came on. It's like, what was that movie, dude, with like Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson way back in the day where he was like talking to some girl in the trailer and she was like, Shanghai, she was hot as hell. Uh, and then when she Shanghai, smiled. Whatever. Is it Shanghai? Shanghai, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the history of United States of Tay. Signs, <laughs> Signs of a bad transmission. Is there something in here that's like a joke? I, I mean, it just looks like a like pretty much a balls of shit. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> it looks like, oh shit. I don't see it. I mean, wow. Dude, these webinars are too much fun. I think I laugh so hard, bro. I feel like I lose like 10,000 calories. I got to go eat like a big ass burger or something to make up for all this laughing. <laughs> I got to go get all you can eat sushi. Right. We need some of those Wagyu pot stickers. Dude, I'm telling you right now, I don't know what we did to find that gem in this world of rocks, but I will never forget that day of, of Wagyu pot stickers. Oh, so good. So Guys, good. Val's calling last call. We're turning on the lights. The roaches are scattering. We love you guys. Uh, every one of our members who are brand new, thank you so much for coming. Any one of our, you know, just uh, members who are already in MIC and show up weekly, thanks again. And anybody who's looking in, man, hit me up at 213-458-5997, guys. We will take care of you. Text me trendy secret code just for the webinar, guys, and we will take care of you. But um, without further ado, as always, happy trading, and we'll see you next week. Adios. Joe, catch you later, buddy. Thank you. Bye.